Mania Realers, welcome to Dory Clock Week. I'm Olive Hoy, your host. Monday, how to find your breakthrough idea if you have more than one passion. Tuesday, how to build and grow your email list. Wednesday, how to structure your day and year to be more productive. Thursday, networking as an introvert, how to talk about yourself. Friday, how to blog for high profile publications and create other social proof. Monday to Friday, February 27th to March 3rd. Happy Tuesday. Hello, everybody. This is Alu Hui. You're watching New York We Zoom. My guest here is Dory Clark. If you have watched Dory's interview, you have been on New York at all, you've seen Dory. She is a marketing strategist. She's an author, speaker, and professor, and she's here to share her knowledge with us. Yesterday, we talked about how to find our passion. I hope you have some idea. You did some thinking yesterday, and today we're going to dive in to know how to grow your following. Welcome to Dory Clock Week. Hi, Dory. How are you today? Hey, Olive. Good to be talking to you today. I have to share, before taking your course myself, there are certain things that I knew in the back of my mind I should have done, but I've never done. Like I bought a website for over a year, never did anything to it. <laughs> just like look through Squarespace and Wix and just <laughs> brainstorm. And I knew I had to start a mailing list and I haven't done it until I took your course and I just like... A LinkedIn no profile? Yeah, yeah, a LinkedIn profile, exactly. Remember I said in the field trip, that's boring, LinkedIn. <laughs> And now I know the value of it. And you just have to get over yourself and your thinking. There are people that just found me on LinkedIn, like which was very surprised. It's not boring if you are not boring and if you set it up and really use it. Yes. So, I want to talk about setting up, building and growing your mailing list. How to do it and why is it important in 2017? Yeah, it's such an important question. I actually feel like this is something that is so enormously critical. And yet, outside of, of maybe the internet marketing world, um, it is not talked about. Because in the general business uh, conversation, all the attention, all the oxygen has been soaked up by social media. You know, that's, that's what people are obsessed with culturally. Oh, how many, how many, uh, you know, followers do you have on Instagram? Uh, how many, you know, how many Snapchat followers? Uh, you know, I mean, Twitter still is a thing, although I'm not, I'm not sure how much longer, but, uh, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah no, the people who like Twitter love Twitter. The only problem with Twitter is that it is not picking up new, uh, new adherents. They haven't really found a way to grow beyond the 300 million and it's also hard to find people to tag because it like sometimes it's not their names right right <laughs> i mean that's that's just ah oh, twitter yeah i know um they <laughs> one day we'll meet and we'll see the twitter handle like above the person's head yes <laughs> yes <laughs> conferences <laughs> exactly. yeah there's so many things that they could have done to make it to make it a lot easier mm. and a lot more useful so we'll see oh, we know it's more promising huh? But yeah, absolutely. So so anyway, social media is the thing that everybody focuses on. But in a lot of ways, I mean, yes, that's that's important. Um, it does spread your message. It does spread your name awareness. But it, it often gets used as a vanity metric. You know, oh, I have so many followers. Um, the the truth is. It, studies have, have been done that show that, you know, for instance, on Twitter, and, um, you know, the presumption is that it's not very different on other platforms, between two and 5% of your followers will see any given post. I mean, these are people who follow you, who have opted in to follow you, and, and you know, literally two or 3% are seeing what you do. And so it's, it's kind of a ridiculous way uh, to attempt to reach people. Um, and, you know, in 2013, Facebook very famously changed their algorithms to make it harder for, uh, for businesses to reach people who had liked them uh, without, with, unless they paid to have that advertising. And that, you know, that, it should not have been surprising. I mean, this is in a business imperative for now a public company. But it, it shook people up. And I think that was the first time where people realized, like, oh, all this time I've spent building something, I have been building um, my house on Mark Zuckerberg's land, and he can do whatever he wants with it. Whereas email, even though there's been a lot of predictions about the death of email and, oh, nobody checks their email, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know what? People still do. It is still their primary 
dashboard of the day. Um, you know, maybe not for teenagers, but if you were a business person, your email is a relatively sacrosanct thing. And in fact, even for high level executives, delegating your inbox is pretty much the last thing that you That's do. True. That is really important. People feel like, oh, it's my messages. And so if you have a level of trust with your audience that you can get them to voluntarily subscribe to and read your messages. Now that's the key. You can't just slap people on your list, but if they voluntarily opt in to see that, that's amazing. And that is the kind of, of high level uh, relationship, high trust relationship that you need to be focusing on building because those are the people who will be your most avid fans and ultimately your customers, whatever that means. If they buy your album, if they go to a workshop that you put on, you know, whatever it is. I like receiving email from you because they are short, sweet, and to the point. And you also write like, you don't, you don't add <laughs> like flashy things on the side and too much graphic. Like I see the message, I got it. And sometimes if I can read, for example, if you share a blog and I don't have time to read it at the time, I remember later to go back to today's email and just like go in and read it and maybe share it on Facebook. Can you share a little bit of your style and, and the other styles that people use? to talk to their followers or their fans. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, one big change that I made a few, a few years ago, I mean, I started it like I think everybody does, which is, um, you know, I, I sort of had this realization like, oh, I should get a, a newsletter. I should do an email newsletter. You know, people, people say these things. And so, okay, you do it. <laughs> um, but then, and then you sign up for a, for a service, a newsletter service. And the first thing that they typically do uh, is they'll say, oh, well, here's a template and you can, you can follow this template. And you say, oh, okay, I guess this is what people do. And the template usually has like a nice little banner with your logo and then this section and this section and this section. And the truth is that when you set that up that way, it, it almost trains your brain to think in newsletter format, which is, oh, well, here I should tell people about like what trips I've been on and where, what I've been doing. <laughs> And here I should tell people about, uh, let's see, some articles I recommend. And here I should tell people about this. And it just, it becomes so formulaic that people look at that and they're just like, oh, what is this marketing crap? Yeah. You know? so at the end, you must be selling me something. And Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it, just, it, just, it just kills the joy out of it because it just looks so banal, like, like exactly what everybody else is doing. And so a couple of years ago, I, I really stepped back and I thought about it and I thought about the, the, the best emails that I got, you know, the list that I enjoyed the most. And they were, uh, they were very different. They were essentially, uh, I mean, you know, they're very much, they're very much newsletters. I mean, they were, they were blast messages to lots of people, but they were written in the style of a personal message. Um, there's no flash, no graphics, just, just an email. And, uh, and it, it was just written, Uh, in a more conversational story-like fashion. And I realized I liked receiving that a lot better. And I thought, you know what, probably other people would as well. And so instead of, um, instead of it just being this kind of back padding kind of thing, like, oh, look at all the places that I've spoken this month. Um, <laughs> I, I tried to, to do something a little, a little different and be a little bit more uh, epistolary in my style. I like that they're always value to Like you're always offering things and their choices. If the first paragraph doesn't apply to you, then the, something else happened later. And it's, it's very, very direct. I also like um, Tim Ferriss, Five Bullet Friday and, and James Altucher. Um, his Those great emails. Email, yeah. I don't know how he can send two emails a day. It's <laughs> long and interesting and like a story that you can learn from. Now, we know we should do it. What are the simple steps you can walk us through? Um, do we need a website first? You know, interestingly enough, you don't even really need a website per se. I mean, that's a good starting point. And I think most people probably should have websites. But if for some reason that's like too complicated for you at, at this moment, um, what you really need more than anything is a, uh, is a landing page. And uh, just, you know, to sort of get clear on terminology, a landing page is um, not a full website. It, it is a page on the internet, but it's not a, a fully developed website. It is just one page and it has a giveaway of some kind that encourages people to opt into your email list. Now, the, the trick here 
um, some people they think, oh, giveaway. Uh, do I need to give away like an like you know an iPhone and there's like a <laughs> raffle or something? And no, um, you know, I mean, you can get a lot of emails very quickly if you say, oh, I'll raffle an iPhone. But those are not your customers. Those are just random people who want things. <laughs> what what you want to do is create something that is relevant to your thing that you do. Um, you know, meaning if you teach courses about how to be a better graphic designer, then you want people who are interested in that subject. And so maybe you create a free ebook uh, that is, you know, uh, 10 quick ways to become a better designer today, you know, and, and obviously anyone that wants that book is presumably going to be relatively interested in what you are talking about. Uh, and, and it's just a way to weed out the people that are not your audience and to find the people that are your audience. And so it doesn't even have to be this fully developed website, but if you have, if you have this landing page uh, and you can, you know, I use a service called lead pages. You could build your own if you wanted to, but um, lead pages is, you know, it's a paid service, but um, you know, not out of reach financially. And, uh, and so it, it just allows you to do that. And you can start collecting emails and communicating with people, even if you don't have a website ready. Wow. That is, that is really good advice. And um, I think tomorrow we're going to talk about more obstacles and how to overcome them. And uh, thank you for sharing about email list. And I think everybody should consider really starting one, like one day, if, Facebook decides to close and all your likes will disappear and you'll be, maybe your friends, you can't even find them anymore <laughs> if you don't have their phone numbers. So email today is still the most direct way to reach your audience. So if you want to learn from Dory, you can go to doryclark.com slash olive, my name, and you see what Dory has prepared for you. And I have to tell you, my life changed so much after taking that course. I would say for like over a month, I watched a video, I did my homework. I also communicated with the fellow classmates in a Facebook group. I was surprised how much you can learn from your peer, um, not true. only from your instructor, because we all are going through the same thing. We all have our own passion, have our own strengths. And um, that was very valuable. So thank you, Dari. Thanks, Alice. See you tomorrow. Another shattered dream You know I have it in me To give you what you want But time and time again You make me watch you leave Another poison letter When I know just what you mean And you must know by now You're all that I want And you must know Never gonna fade away Can we get this shit together in here?